Hey, hello everyone. Uh, what's up? This is Kevin from Invest Singapore Property SG. I um, well, I happen to be uh uh doing a financial calculation for a client of mine, and I thought uh I shall do this as a case study also. Uh, um, hopefully you know if you are in a similar situation, you can benefit from what I have to share. And so so uh just to uh. Uh, set the context right uh, so this this uh, client of mine uh, lady she's uh, 35 years old uh, Singaporean right uh, so the purpose of her contacting me was that she is looking to she has a her eyes set on a freehold apartment in Geelong that will be uh, costing her about $610,000 right so uh, she came to me um initially wanting to uh look for investment and then um uh, based on her objectives we decided that you know she wanted something freehold something central so found some uh we managed to find something in Geelong over there uh at, at some of this price after a bit of negotiation okay so so of course the thing now is uh, uh we will need to work out right her finances as well right um uh for her right um okay here's the situation she she has recently been uh under employment since the start of this year right so uh salary is a fixed income of four thousand dollars a month uh prior to that past one or two years uh she has been um uh self-employed right so so there's no uh uh salary slip or anything right uh she hasn't been working previously right so uh effectively her cpfoa is new right uh she i think maybe she has some of it that is being invested or something so so anyway the conclusion was there's no cpfoa available to to utilize for this purchase of property right uh, but she does have available cash of about three hundred thousand. Hey, uh, in terms of loan wise uh, she drives a car so she took on financing for her vehicle um, and her monthly repayment obligation is $1,250 so now let's just run it through our financial calculator and see whether uh, whether will it be viable for her with her set of financial circumstances to purchase this property that's worth $610,000 okay so um Okay, so this is the financial calculator. If you are not aware, there's something that we came up with. Uh, you, if you look at the tabs below, right? There's a few um, different different tabs uh, for different purpose. So you can use this to calculate your break even if you buy a new launch. You can use it to calculate break even if you buy a, a completed property. You can use it to calculate your rental yield, so and so forth, right? Um, for for the purpose of this. Uh, uh, clients who wants to check out whether they can afford so and so property, right? Then we will use this thing called the affordability calculator. Okay, for her, very simple because um, uh, she doesn't existingly own any property, so uh, you don't have to you don't have to so called um, uh, do the selling. Okay, so uh, okay, let me just zero out the. The, the entire thing you see how this calculator works is very simple uh the the green color portions are pre-filled uh formulas that i've worked into the the calculator already so what i need from you is the input your personal input and uh basically just fill out the yellow color fields so this affordability calculator uh does go with the assumption that there could be two borrowers at the same time so uh most situation you know husband and wife okay but in this case that's only her alone right so uh, so you you can leave the entire uh, borrowers to portion blank and then you just do the borrow one so age right 35 uh, annual fixed income four thousand dollars oh sorry four annual so four times twelve forty eight thousand dollars okay so if you are self-employed then you will leave the first one zero and then you fill in the annual variable income instead so so for self-employed uh people like myself right then you will be assessed based on uh, not your money fixed income but rather your uh, past one or two years uh, declared NOA okay uh, if you have any form of rental income you that you can show for it might aid you as well right so by default the calculator works out one month she's making four thousand dollars okay any debt obligations uh, no credit card no other loan so only a car loan one thousand two hundred fifty dollars a month so you have to put that in as well um, and then it will it will auto generate you know uh, 60 percent tdsr ceilings 
which is 60% of the $4,000 is actually $2,400 a month. So this TDSR uh, basically means that your um, uh, your loan in totality should not exceed 60% of what you make monthly, all right, which is 2004 And because she has a existing car loan, so you have to further deduct 1250 from 2400 That leaves her with 1150 That means whatever property loan that she decides to take on, the monthly repayment amount cannot exceed 1150 This is a ceiling cap set by the uh, Monetary Authority of Singapore. Okay, and for her age of 35, I think this is probably the last best age for her to get a maximum loan tenure of 30 years, uh, up to age 65. All right, thereafter, if she decide not to buy and buy like maybe five years later, then her maximum loan tenure will be 25. All right, unless the government changes uh, the the policy once again. Okay, if not, then I think this is probably one of the best age to consider buying a property uh, to so-called maximize the the tenure of the loan that you can stretch. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So based on this, right, uh, also worked out that her maximum eligible loan will be about 256000 there about. Okay, so now, will this amount together with the money she has be enough for a purchase? Let's see. Okay, so what's the property purchase with, uh, value is 610000 Just have to put that in. Okay, so she's buying her first property, so you just look at the first column. Um, uh, in fact, you know, based on uh, 610k, 75% LTV loan to valuation is actually 457,000. But um, but because of her income, right, she can only borrow 256. So the balance, she has to make sure that she has enough CPF or cash to make up for the shortfall. Okay, the, the these are all um uh kind of like pre pre configured. I think legal fees are pre standard two to three thousand. Uh, mortgage stamp duty there about so uh, you don't have to change that what what you need to change is the stamp duty um, uh, different uh, property value of course affects your stamp duty so you can uh, click on the link then you go to the uh, stamp duty calculator that I have as well um, put in 610,000 okay Singapore citizen so look at the uh, 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 top row first row Singapore citizen uh, and then the first column under the first property so for her the stamp duty payable will be twelve thousand nine hundred dollars. So let's go back. Um, here twelve thousand and nine hundred dollars. Okay, so there. So her based on uh, so minimum cash she requires forty seven thousand. That's of course assuming that she can get a uh, up to seventy five percent loan. All right. Her OA available OA zero. O, available cash three hundred thousand. So. Uh, actually, what you should be concerned with is basically this last line, uh, whether you have a surplus or a deficit. So in this case, uh, unfortunately, I don't think um, she is able to afford this purchase because based on her situation, she does have a shortfall of $70,600.77. So it's either... Um, so it's all very straightforward now. So so it's either um, you find a way to increase your cash position. So she has to maybe find somewhere to come up with another seventy to hundred thousand or so, so that she can buy. Or um, she has to adjust her expectations and maybe go for either a smaller size or further out property or maybe not a freehold one, so that you can further reduce your uh, um, the purchase price, right? So. So, uh, because I don't think uh, you'll be able to change your pay overnight, right? Um, uh, so that's something that you cannot change. You can't change your age either. Um, if somehow she can find a way to get rid of her car loan, maybe that helps a bit, all right? So, so example, let you let let's just for discussion sake, just say that assuming she pays off her car loan, or she doesn't have a car loan. You realize that you know if you do not have a car loan. She can actually borrow two thousand four. She can actually borrow five hundred thousand, which is more than enough. And she will actually, in fact, have surplus from her cash position. Okay, but unfortunately, uh, this TDSR is actually a deal breaker for a lot of people. So, so look at how this car loan actually affects her uh, ability to borrow money, and that's why now she has this shortfall of seventy thousand and six hundred dollars. So, so it's very straightforward. So, all I will do is present this uh, situation to her. And then she will have to make a decision. Either she has to manage the expectation on the purchase side, or she has to find a way to come up with this shortfall. Okay, so that's all for this um, uh, short video. 
um, if you guys are interested to get a copy of this uh, calculator um, uh, it's actually free right so we we are more than happy to share with you you can contact me whatsapp me kevin nine two eight three one nine six, or drop me an email um, please let me know who you are so that I can know how to address you as well when you when you drop me a message right uh, and also maybe just do a bit of uh, uh, advertisement you know every um, first and third Monday of the month um, uh, myself and my colleagues Dara, Edwin, Willie uh, we actually run a um, uh, monthly weekly seminar workshop uh, with regards to the Singapore property market so we will do a bit of updates and then uh, I think going forward we'll also be doing reviews so if you're watching this video uh, I think the next coming one will be uh, let me see all right so we just had one on the 3rd of august so the next one will be the 17th of august it's always 8 p.m uh the event takes about an hour or so unless you have a lot of questions um so the next one i think we will also be doing a review of pen rolls because i think there's one pen rolls and for it Bukitima, these are the two so-called notable launches that's happening this month so we'll do a review on that if you want to sign up for our webinar uh, all you have to do is to visit this website here newlaunchworkshop.com and you just have to sign up it's free I, uh, I don't have to pay anything, just have to sign up and uh, turn up for the webinar. Okay, so uh, that's all for my this very short video. Uh, I hope it has been useful. Uh, do give me a thumbs up or share with any friends who might benefit from this. Uh, and then, um, uh, you know, as we go along, then if I, if I get more case study, then I will just be uh, sharing a bit more tutorials. Um, with financial calculation or if you have any specific questions specific to your situation that you need to uh you would like to find out or get clarity right so you can contact me personally or you can leave us a call sorry leave us a comment in the video below as well so all right so that's it happy national day i'll see you guys around bye bye